Introduction to Exercise 9, Iron and Weighted Graphs, Networks, and the Shortest Path Problem on page 440 of your textbook. Today we're answering how do we incorporate values into graphs to determine the most efficient path. I've been mentioning this over the last couple of lessons so that we should be generally aware of the scenario. We can assign values to individual edges in order to provide a, an idea of how we can look for the most efficient pathway. So in this circumstance, there's two words that we need to define, or rather know the key distinction between weighted graphs and networks. Right? Of course, the chapter is called graphs and networks, so it's important that we know the difference. Weighted graphs are a graph with a number associated with each edge. These numbers are called weights. That's why we call them weighted graphs, because each edge has a different weight. Right? So the numbers are called weights. A network is specifically a weighted graph in which the graph has weights that are a specific quantities. So, for example, distance, time, and cost. So, if you're looking at, for example, a textbook question that just says, these are the numbers, go for it, find the smallest value, that would be a weighted graph. However, if it provides something in terms of time, distance, cost, man, man hours, I don't know, anything that's to do with a specific physical quantity, that's to do with a network. Any questions about the key distinction between the two of them? Okay. Uh, if you look at the example on the right hand side, you can see towns uh, and edges connecting them. Now let's assume that those edges are roads. What could, <clears throat> what could those numbers symbolize? What could, for example, the 5 between town B and C mean? It could be 5. Good, it could be 5 kilometers. What else could it be? Five minutes, I like it. Anything else? It could be five dollars worth of fuel, right? It could be five drivers necessary. Or it could be, I don't know, the, the five trees on the road. I don't know. It could be anything, right? But anytime we assign a, a specific a specific concept, a quantity to that five, a kilometer, a dollar, a minute, that becomes a network and not a weighted Oh, it is a way to graph, but it becomes a network, sorry. Yes? It's probably a dumb question. That's right. I'm just curious, can you assign multiple different, like, you know, like, let's say eight minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And then you can also say, like, $20 worth of fuel. Can you do multiple? Or Great question. That would be two separate graphs. Okay. Yeah. Not a dumb question at all. And you know I'd say it was, if it was. All right, moving on. So I've taken this example from the textbook, uh, but there is a section that I've cut out just to make it a little bit easier for us to look at. Uh, I, I've just essentially removed what each one of these letters mean, but I'll, I'll go through them in a second. Uh, in this specific example, it says that the number on the edges represents the time in minutes taken to walk directly between these places. So in question A, it says how long does it take to walk from bridge directly to Fern Gully. Now, just because I've cut it out, I'll tell you what I, uh, it says. From the bridge, obviously, it's just B. I'll use a brighter color so it's a bit clearer. There we go. I'll use B for the bridge and then F for Fern Gully. So the question is just saying walk directly from B to F. So that's just this path right there. Pretty straightforward. It's going to give me 12 minutes. Happy with that? Easy. All right, next one. How do, sorry, how long does it walk, take to walk from the old tree, which I'm going to say is T, to the fern gully, which is F, via the waterfall, W, and the bridge, B. So then, again, we're taking a specific path. We're starting from the old tree, which is T, walking to the fern gully via, so using the route, the waterfall, bridge, and then back to the fern gully. So that, to me, is going to be 10 minutes plus 9 minutes plus the 12 minutes, which gives me a total of 1931 minutes. Any questions about that? Okay, so for example, if you're planning out a zoo and you want to find how long it takes or how far it is from each, from each road, between these uh, ex exhibitions, right? Then you can use a weighted map or rather a, a, a network to know exactly how long it takes to get from point A to point B or point C or whatever it is, okay? However, typically speaking, we use these to try and find the shortest path, right? Let's say you want to go and find, go to every single exhibit at a zoo, but without having to travel all these redundant paths or finding a, like a, a path that is extremely long. So instead, we use the shortest path problem. 
So, in other words, we're determining the least, and these are just examples, it doesn't have to be restricted to these three, the least distance, time, or cost to move around a network. In year 11, we're focusing on the idea of inspection. Inspection is just look at it and see. Right? Uh, there might be some ways that we can, we, there are some ways, sorry, uh, in year 12 that you look at a more systematic approach, but in year 11 we focus on the idea of just in looking at it, inspecting, and see if we can get the correct answer from there. This question says, find the shortest route between town C and town F in the previous network opposite. That's right, I've just put it here, that's right. Uh, please note that the weight associated with the graph's edge does not necessarily correlate to the length of that edge. I'm going to say that one more time. The weight of the edge does not necessarily correlate to the length of that edge. Okay? So, for example, to me, this line here, this line here is a different length to this line there, but they're still both being assigned 5. So don't misunderstand it as it's longer, therefore it's going to have a higher number. Alright, so, to get from C to F, there are many different ways. You could go this way, you could go this way, you could go this way, and you could go this way. There's a lot of different ways. But we want to find the shortest path in terms of its weight. So, any ideas as to how we might get there? What's something that looks generally short? Don't have to confirm it. it just looks generally short other than all the other ones. Well, first, do I want to go through the 5 or the 6 path? 5, okay, let's go through the 5 path. Do I want to go through the 5, the 4, the 7? 4? And then, of course, the only other option is 7. So I'm going to just double check, add them up. 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 7 is 16. So that's 16. That's pretty short. I don't think there's much better. However, uh, I'm going to double check. I'm going to double check because... This one here, going by 6, 4, and then 6, looks pretty good as well, doesn't it? So here, 6, 4, 16, that gives me 16. Okay. Uh, is there an even shorter route by any chance? So we've taken the 5 route, and of course 5... 7, 6 would be 12, 18, so that's not the longest route. I could go 5, 4, 7 as I've already done. I've done 6, 4, 6. Should I try the 6, 9 approach? Go down all the way? Well, it's got to be longer. So to me, both of these would be a shortest route. They both add up to 16. Any questions? Okay. Just to clarify, because as I mentioned, I've made a mistake. The issue is, there's something wrong with this highlighted path. The one that's in the uh, the blue highlighter. What's wrong with this? It is in fact not the, lo not the shortest path. What is wrong with this? I'll give you a hint. It's to do with this middle section here. Oh, there's nothing wrong with the intersecting. Thank you. This is an 8, not a 4. The 4 represents this value, or this edge, not this one here. So therefore, this is wrong, because it would add up to 6 plus 8, which is 14, plus 6, gives you 20. So the answer is, in fact, C, B, E, and then finally, F. Any questions? Okay.